So let's start um, with a domestic policy. What you're proposing in the referendum on the 19th of February, this uh, following Sunday, uh, is a ban for all politicians and civil servants um, to, to have assets um, in tax savings. Can you give us a little bit more information how this ban would work? Sure. I mean, it's a, it's a very ambitious, uh, I think, radical and uh, exemplary, uh, also symbolic, uh, referendum uh, this Sunday, 19th of February. Well, it started from a, an announcement on uh, May 24th last year. Uh, the president had its has had a, his annual address, kind of what the Americans would call State of the Union address, whatever, to Parliament last year on the 24th of May, and announced an ethical pact in order to fight against tax havens, particularly within the context of the scandal of the Panama Papers, which I think is an opportunity we much uh, that progressive forces globe, uh, worldwide have to seize in order to kind of position this topic again and put it back on the on the table. And it kind of brought to the fore the fact that a lot of people aspiring to political posts in Ecuador. You know, people who want to run for the presidency, which is absolutely legitimate, but also people running from different, um, from uh, to become MPs or you know, uh, mayors or in local government, uh, have assets, have capital, have accounts in tax havens. Now, there's a striking contradiction there between you know, kind of the patriotic discourse of wanting to run for office and and you, you know most people running for office saying they're going to bring in, uh, foreign uh, investment to the country and uh, you know and make the, the country as kind of competitive and productive and attractive to foreign investment on the one hand and on the other hand these politicians having uh, and the self avowed uh, practice of having um, uh, all their capitals uh, investments, uh, you know, accounts, um, so on and so forth in tax havens. There surely is a contradiction there between the, 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 you know, the, the, the promise of bringing capital to the country and on, on, at the, you know, once they're in office and on a personal level uh, uh, take, taking money out of, 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 of the country. There's, a, there's an even greater contradiction in a way with, the, with Ecuadorian migrants certainly during neoliberalism, during the heyday of neoliberalism at the end of the 1990s, beginning of the 21st century, there was a huge wave of Ecuadorian migrants leaving the country because of a big camp, uh, banking crisis, a lot of political instability, seven presidents in 10 years, the country was in mayhem, and about two million Ecuadorians left the country. Um, and these people left the country and then within a few years of having, leaving the con of having left the country were sending remittances uh, from, you know, 100 euros ago, 100 dollars ago, but basically that those remittances played a crucial role in stabilizing the Ecuadorian economy. They were a major uh, source of, of dollars for the Ecuadorian economy. At the same time as our elites were, uh, you know, not 100 dollars at a time, but 100 million dollars at a time, you know, taking money out of the economy, often dodging taxes and hiding this money in tax havens. Uh, it doesn't solve the whole tax haven issue, it affects civil public workers, civil servants, uh, but it, it kind of seeks to position the debate on the national agenda. Over the last few months, there's been a lot of discussion on the role of tax havens in impeding development and whether it's, whether it's okay that elites should hide their money abroad. It's kind of brought to the fore this whole discussion on, on taxes, the role of taxes in the social contract. And we're seeing already, before the referendum has even taken place, a return of capital to the country. Because lots of people with legitimate political ambitions are thinking, oh, maybe I should bring my money back to the country, because otherwise it's really going to look bad if I run for office. So this, the context, the kind of Korea referendum, which could be replicated in other parts of the world, uh, it won't stop the private entrepreneurs from hiding their money. It's still going to look bad for everybody because obviously the issue is now out there, but it will stop uh, people, particularly politicians, from having that double discourse. And it's also part of a major fight against corruption because, as you know, um, we've done a lot, a number of Latin American countries have done a lot, Ecuador is probably one of the best examples, in fighting institutional types of corruption. So corruption in the police forces, corruption in customs, corruption in, in all sorts of aspects of the civil service. 
But the kind of corruption that's really difficult to tackle is the backhand payment to a civil servant in exchange for a contract. So the kind of multinationals bidding for a, a contract to build a bridge, to build a, a, a refinery, to build a, a barge, to build whatever it is, infrastructure, and getting the contract by paying backhanders to civil servants. And those backhanders are almost inevitably paid in secret accounts of kind of ghost companies in uh, tax havens. And that's very, very difficult to, to control because the definition of tax havens is the secrecy that goes on. And because of that secrecy, we can't always detect it. So that's also part of the anti-corruption agenda. So that's what we're doing nationwide.